Hey folks, it's Manny Ain't Right, with some more unbelievable doctrine, that is, a belief, held by some professing born-again Christians. Many of you, might say, I don't believe, Mr. Ain't Right, that some people actually believe this, but, here is a direct quote, taken from a religious leader, on the internet, to prove it to you folks. Quote, if we have one maverick molecule running loose out there, we have no assurance whatsoever that this single molecule may not be the grain of sand in the machinery of God's eternal plan. It may be the thing that runs amok and makes it impossible, ultimately, for Christ to return to this planet. It may be the thing that destroys any hope for the consummation of the kingdom of God, leaving all those promises of God unfulfilled. There are no maverick molecules in a universe where God is sovereign. Unquote. So folks, we believe, that God is sovereign, and even though the word, sovereign, was not even used once, in the entire King James Bible, we believe, that basically, everything that ever happens, good, or bad, happens, because God wanted it to happen. Okay folks, here is what our religious opponent, Rev. Andrew Womack has to say, about the cessationist, Calvinistic view of God's sovereignty. Quote. Folks, I don't know why, I'm including this next part, by Rev. Andrew Womack, since I'm Manny Ain't Right, with the CB handle, of Crazy Dude, but, I am. The Sovereignty of God the word sovereign is not used in the King James Version of the Bible. It is used 303 times in the Old Testament of the New International Version, but it is always used in association with the word Lord and is the equivalent of the King James Version's Lord God. Not a single one of those times is the word sovereign used in the manner that it has come to be used in religion in our day and time. Religion has resulted in the invention of a new meaning for the word sovereign, which basically means God controls everything. Nothing can happen but what he wills or allows. However, there is nothing in the actual definition that states that. The dictionary defines sovereign as, 1. Paramount, supreme. 2. Having supreme rank or power. 3. Independent, a sovereign state. 4. Excellent. None of these definitions means that God controls everything. It is assumed that since God is paramount or supreme that nothing can happen without his approval. That is not what the scriptures teach. In 2 Peter 3 9, Peter said, The Lord is, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This clearly states that it is not the Lord's will for anyone to perish, but people are perishing. Jesus said, Enter yet in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, Matt 7.13. Relatively few people are saved compared to the number that are lost. God's will for people concerning salvation is not being accomplished. This is because the Lord gave us the freedom to choose. He doesn't will anyone into hell. He paid for the sins of the whole world, 1 John 2 colon 2, 1 Tim 4.10, but we must choose to put our faith in Christ and receive his salvation. People are the ones choosing hell by not choosing Jesus as their savior. It is the free will of man that damns them, not God. People virtually have to climb over the roadblocks that God puts in their way to continue on their course to hell. The Cross of C. The Cross of Christ and the drawing power of the Holy Spirit are obstacles that every sinner encounters. No one will ever stand before God and be able to fault him for withholding the opportunity to be saved. The Lord woos every person to him, but we have to cooperate. Ultimately, the Lord simply enforces the consequences of people's own choices. God has a perfect plan for every person's life, J29 11, but he doesn't make us walk that path. We are free moral agents with the ability to choose. He has told us what the right choices are, Deuteronomy 30 19, but he doesn't make those choices for us. God gave us the power to control our destinies. Typical teaching on the sovereignty of God puts Jesus in the driver's seat with us as passengers. On the surface that looks good. 
all of us have encountered the disastrous results of doing our own thing. We desire to be led of the Lord, and teaching that nothing happens but what God wills fits that nicely. However, the scriptures paint a picture of each of us being behind the will of our own lives. We are the one doing the driving. We are supposed to take directions from the Lord, but he doesn't do the driving for us. Man has been given the authority over his own life, but he must have the Lord's direction to succeed. Jeremiah 10:23 says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself, it is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. God created us to be dependent upon him and our independence is at the root of all our problems. As if it wasn't bad enough for man to try to run his affairs independently of God and his standards, it has been made even worse by religion teaching us that all our problems are actually blessings from God. 